coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll introduce you to seven operations that have made stewardship and conservation a priority as we highlight the 2022 winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. We'll also examine why this program is so important to the future of the beef industry. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. For more than three decades, the Environmental Stewardship Award Program, also known as ESAP, has recognized the nation's best operations for their outstanding stewardship practices and conservation achievements. These regional and national winners are honored for their commitment to protecting the environment, and improving fish and wildlife habitats while operating a profitable cattle business. Today, we're introducing the seven regional winners for 2022 and taking a closer look at their operations. We'll also discuss why the stewardship program is so important to the ongoing success of the beef industry. Now, generous support from our sponsors has been one key to the success and longevity of the Environmental Stewardship Award program. But another has been the commitment of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. And joining us now is NCBA President-Elect Mark Isley. Mark, why is the ESAP program so important to the beef industry and your work at NCBA? It showcases the great work our producers are doing. They're already doing. And we're such a modest bunch, we don't always talk about it, but now we can show it and present it to the public. It's great. They are incredible stories from people all across the country using lots of tools and technologies to improve their stewardship. And I suspect it helps us a lot in our work in, in, uh, in D.C. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, since we get producers who can not only survive but also thrive, especially under different and adverse conditions, mm -hmm. we can showcase that in D.C. We can tell the lawmakers how these things are working, how they adjust the laws or the rules and regulations to the benefit of the producers. Huge, huge ability for us to leverage that. I'm always impressed by uh, the kinds of practices and, and the innovation that's coming from these farms and ranches. Uh, give us your reaction to that. It's overwhelming sometimes. You might think you're a good operator, and you might be. But then you go to a place and you say, wow, that's a great idea. I can go home and incorporate that, or maybe I shouldn't because I know it wouldn't work. But it's, it's an education for everybody that's involved. Yeah, it, it's something that really inspires you to reach a little further than you thought was possible to implement some practices. And, and think outside the box sometimes. Yeah. So one last question. What would you tell folks in terms of, of becoming not only involved in NCBA, but maybe uh, thinking about themselves as a potential candidate for one of these regional awards? I, I think it's a great idea. They should consider the fact that other folks could learn from their experience and their practices, and to showcase that would be benefit to absolutely everybody involved. Thank you, Mark, for your help. Pleasure's all mine. Thank you. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the Environmental Stewardship Award winners, see photos or videos, or even learn how to nominate someone for the award next year, visit the website environmentalstewardship.org. NCBA represents cattle farmers and ranchers in seven different regions around the country. And accordingly, there is one winner of the Environmental Stewardship Award from each of those seven regions. So now, it's time to reveal our first honoree for 2022 with a visit to the state of New York. Being an asset to the environment is really important to us. And we're proud to be environmentally sustainable but we always strive to do better and do better every year. Hi, I'm Jonathan Lamb from Lamb Farms. Uh, we're located in Oakfield, New York. Lamb Farms is a family dairy operated by the Lamb and Beasy families. The farm uh, was started uh, by my father, uh, Gordon, and my grandfather, Leslie, in the 1960s. And then after that, uh, Jim Vesey and his family joined the operation in the 1970s. It's been a pretty good relationship for 40-some years. 
The younger generation that's coming on is really aggressive and got a lot of drive to get things done and get things done right. And it's just a joy to watch the growth, watch them protect the environment. Our goal is to produce the highest quality milk in an environmentally friendly manner, but we're also part of the beef industry. We're not thought of to be beef farmers because of course dairy is the focus, uh, but ultimately we do put a lot of beef out to the consumer. We think about manure every day because it's such a volatile piece of our farm. So we're taking the manure from the dairies and we apply it to fields and utilizing the nutrients that the manure has so we can reduce the amount of chemical fertilizers that we're putting in our fields. We do use a lot of technology. Applying the manure is all used with GPS, so nothing gets over applied. Not only do we recycle the manure in the field, and what we bed our cows with is actually recycled dried manure solids. We have some screw presses that dry that manure to a kind of a powder consistency so that it's comfortable for the cows to lay down on. So some people might think of manure as a detriment and we like to think of it as an asset. We also built an anaerobic methane digester in 2009. Manure sits in the digester and we're harvesting the methane off that manure to export renewable natural gas out to the local community. I guess we're unique on this farm in that we're capturing that methane and we're producing a product that is an asset to the community and, and can be utilized rather than being a detriment to the climate. We believe that cattle in a clean environment can go together and I'm proud of all the efforts that we make to be sustainable. We need to be responsible and that doesn't mean we're perfect. We try to get better every year and that really doesn't just apply to stewardship, that applies to every aspect of our operation. Whether that's milk production out of a cow or it's the way we manage our nutrients you know, inside of our community, whatever we're going to do, I want to do the best we possibly can. We've always tried to be good stewards, and the better steward you are, the better the land rewards you. We've learned that over time and strive to do the best that we can. One by one, we're highlighting the 2022 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's head to Region 2 and meet the winners from Alabama. Cattle in a clean environment go hand in hand. This place wouldn't be in the condition it's in and improving each year if it weren't for the cattle. Hi, I'm Will Carter. From Carter Cattle Company located in Pentlala, Alabama, just south of Montgomery. My ancestors settled on this farm around 1820 and we've been here ever since. I'm the sixth generation on this land and my kids are the seventh. Merritt, my son who is 12, and my daughter Sarah Elizabeth who is 14, they carry a lot of weight in doing the day-to-day -day chores and uh, we're thankful that they are active and that they are interested in carrying on this farm. We also own a veterinary hospital, and the two of us are the primary veterinarians there. The hospital is a good launching point to talk to people about farming and ranching. We take that opportunity to teach them and tell them what we do, how we manage the land, how we manage cows. We welcome people to ask questions, whether it's at the clinic or at the farm. We enjoy that. We're located in the Pentlala watershed. Because the creek runs through the farm, it, it's really important for us to manage our land and our practices to protect that water source. We've started using electric fencing to fence out the creek and minimize the access that animals have to the creek. We've run new water lines and put in water troughs to provide a clean source of water for the cattle. It also allows us to rotationally graze our business is based on growing grass. We use cattle to turn a low quality product into a high quality protein. So to manage our grasses effectively, we need adequate rest periods and we need even graze periods. 
by allowing an increased rest period with this land, that increases our organic matter significantly. So the more organic matter we can build, the more nutrients we can retain. We take fairly regular soil samples on our pasture land to make sure the nutrients are balanced, that we get adequate growth. We also keep grazing records on the cattle. It allows us to look back over a year and see where we need to adjust for the next grazing season. I think we have embraced the calling of stewardship because we love the land. It's hard not to do something <laughs> that you love, so it, it comes natural for us. Some days are hard, but you love what you do, and it's so worthwhile. And with stewardship, just some small practices, the things we do aren't hard, they aren't rocket science, but they make a big difference. My hope for the future of Carter Cattle Company is that it will continue to grow and continue to improve the resources that uh, we have been blessed to care for. You know, the saying is, we just borrow it from the next generation, and it's so true. We've got to take care of this place so that it can take care of us, and the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. Now we're just getting started on this special edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Coming up, we'll introduce you to five more operations that have made stewardship a priority as we continue our look at the 2022 ESAP Regional Winners. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Weeds will rob me of my investments. The weeds are not palatable to the cows. They will not eat them, or if they do eat them, they, some of them may be toxic. So there's a return on investment by allowing there to be more grass available to be grazed by the cattle. Have you taken a hard look at the performance of your cow herd? More producers are turning to the proven genetics offered by Gelvy and Balancer females. We like the Balancers just because they're really good mamas, they got good feet and good udders. The reason that we started using the Balancer genetics is to create the perfect hybrid female. To have that composite hybrid female that lasts a long time, has moderate mature status, and highly fertile. Moderate framed Gelvy and Balancer females stay in your herd longer and offer outstanding performance. Gelvy and Balancer females are really known for their fertility, for their longevity, and for the ability to raise heavy weaning calf year after year. Make the smart, sustainable, and profitable choice with Gelvy and Balancer females. Find out more at gelvy.org. Today, we're taking a look at the 2022 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. So how are the ESAP winners selected and What's their role in sharing the sustainability story of our industry? Joining us now is Barb Cooksley. She's a former president of the Nebraska Cattlemen's and a member of the selection committee. So Barb, why is it so important uh, to share this environmental story of beef cattle producers through the ESAP award? There are so few people in production ag anymore and by having a platform, a forum to tell our story in our own words and with our own land, uh, we can help people understand what we do, why we do it, the importance of grazing animals to the whole environment. So you're a member of the selection committee. Can you tell us who else is on the selection committee and maybe give us a little bit of insight into the process of how you go about selecting these winners? There's seven regional vice presidents. We have seven regions within NCBA. So as a regional vice president on the policy side, you're automatically on the committee. We have uh, land grant universities. We have some companies. We have agencies. We've got uh, nonprofits, some NGOs on there, plus past winners of the program. So it's a nice variety of people with basically different lenses on how they look at sustainability or conservation. So on the selection committee, I mean, what specifically are you looking for uh, in the winners? Passion, I think would be the first word. Uh, 
love of the land. And usually we look for something maybe just a little bit different. We have multi-generational families, but sometimes we have a first generation. They're, they're new to the business. But how do they tell their story back home? And how can we use that to tell the story nationwide or beyond? That advocacy component is really important. One of the other questions I had is, as I've looked at these regional winters, there's so much difference between regions in terms of the issues they're facing, whether it be you know, Chesapeake Bay or somebody that has no water all, at all in the Western United States. It's got to be challenging trying to sort through those differences and make your selections. Tell us about that. It is really difficult. We get the applications ahead of time. You read through them. You have uh, a checklist that you go through yeah. certain ways to, to get points. But then it comes down to a personal decision. I'm from the central U.S., Sand Hills Range, and I'm having to look at high desert to uh, lowland swamp people with different altitudes or precip. Yeah. And so it does come down to how they tell their story. Yeah. And then the discussions amongst committee members can be very interesting and sometimes really lengthy. I bet. I'm sure that's right. You mentioned advocacy, and clearly they serve as great advocates. But I would say they can also serve as inspiration to other producers like me who see the kind of things that they are implementing in their farms and ranches and, and ask myself if I might be able to do a few of those things, too. Would you agree with that? Oh, Definitely. Uh, you can learn so much from not just talking to your neighbor, but uh, here at NCBA, when you're at a convention, you get to talk to people from different parts of the country, share your stories. And so it is inspiring. You pick up something new. And ESEP is an, just another way to learn something. Wonderful program with over a 30-year history. Thank you so much for coming to the show and sharing more about it. Thank you, Kevin. Now, if you want to rewatch the stories of these regional winners, then visit the Environmental Stewardship Awards page on YouTube. Not only can you see this year's winners, but you can check out all the winners from past years as well. While you're there, you can also go to the Cattleman to Cattleman page to catch up on anything you've missed in our show, including educational segments and producer profiles from producers all across the country. So check out both the Environmental Stewardship Awards page and the Cattleman to Cattleman page on YouTube. Cattle producers face all kinds of challenges when it comes to protecting the environment, but they all have a common goal, and that's leaving the land better than they found it. Let's head to Region 3 and the winning operation in Wisconsin. We are so appreciative that the good Lord has given us the opportunity to manage a little bit of his creation for a short period of time. And uh, I'm going to manage it to the best of my ability, and I'm also going to share what I know about this land to the next generation. I'm Jerry Huth, owner and operator of Huth Pold Herefords here in Oakfield, Wisconsin, along with s &H Livestock Enterprises, LLC, which is a partnership between myself and Josh Scharf. I started working out here back in high school, even grade school, putting up hay for Jerry. After college, Jerry needed the help on the farm, and I, I loved being out here, so we formed this partnership. We just worked out a deal where we can start incorporating Josh into this operation to get some growth and uh, keep on going to take over from this old fella. Our farm is approximately one mile north of the Horicon Marsh, which is one of the largest marsh systems in the United States. The challenges that we face on that is containing the animals so their runoff does not get into the streams that go into the marsh. We are very sensitive on uh, having grass buffer strips that can absorb any runoff from the fields or from the cattle. This land is our business and that's why we take care of it. We talk about limiting erosion. You don't want phosphates going into your water source. 
Well, one way to do that is to increase the forage density and limit that erosion. You're also sequestering carbon while you're doing that. And clean water benefits wildlife, it benefits cattle, it benefits humans. of the first people to start grazing public lands in Wisconsin. When we first took the cattle out there, it was woody vegetation that was over my head, almost over the top of a tractor. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources was burning. They were spraying chemicals, and now they have not done that a single time since we've had cattle out there. After the first year, you could start to see the grasses pop through. There was a lot of clover, a lot of legumes that pop through, things that are desirable for cattle, but also desirable for wildlife. It has been a great example of how people can work in conjunction with a number of different agencies, federal and state, to create beneficial land for the livestock and for the wildlife. The proudest moment that I have is when I see my kids come out here and enjoy what I'm working hard for and, and knowing that how we're doing it allows them to do the same thing in the future. The fire has not gone out for me to keep on trying to learn something a little different, to do a little bit better job, and it is our responsibility to maintain this land and try to make it better for the future generations. We've already seen three great operations as we highlight the 2022 winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's head now to Region 4 and meet the winners from Texas. This ranch is a great cattle ranch. It makes perfect sense to run cattle here. It's not going to be a better golf course. It's not going to be a better shopping center. This is what this land was made for. I'm David Crow. Uh, we, my family owns the Parks Ranch. It's a cow-calf operation. It is a family operation. My father and I work together. We're on the coastal prairie in South Texas. We're about 60 miles from the Gulf of Mexico. This ranch has a lot of history to it. Colonel Fannin surrendered his army to Santa Ana's troops on this ranch, which is an integral part of the Five for Independence for the state of Texas. So that's, that's a real plus for this ranch. It's, it's really a, a cool part of it. The ranch has been owned by the Parks family since 1860, and we purchased it in 2000. I'm a first generation rancher, Matt's a second generation. We don't get bogged down in, in the way things used to be done. We're always looking forward on better ways for us to manage our cattle, manage the ranch. When we bought the ranch, it was just divided into two pastures, and it was for more or less continuous grazing. So we switched to rotational grazing. We have 10 pastures and we have two different herds that are grazing in two different pastures on a, any given time. And by doing that, it allows us to rest eight pastures and that allows our grass to, uh, to recover and to give the pastures the necessary rest they need. We've put in probably 20 miles of fence, if not more on this ranch. It's created a, a grazing plan that's sustainable, it works. It gives you an opportunity to, to survive a drought. When it does get dry, you still have grass you can rotate into, and the pastures you come out to, it gives them an opportunity to rest, and when it does rain, they come back. We spend a lot of our budget on brush control and combating a lot of invasive species. Brush control is, is, is very important for us because if we don't stay on top of it, that brush keeps coming back. We use primarily crop dusters. We also do a lot of IPT work, individual plant treatment. It has been very beneficial to us as far as grass growth goes. This is supposed to be open prairie. Right now we're doing our best to keep the open areas open. You have to manage this land. And the best way to do it for not only the land, but the biodiversity, the wildlife, the cattle are an integral part of that. 
My dad and I are always striving to, to make the land better at the Parks Ranch. It's not only our job, it's our passion. We're doing our best to take care of this land for the next generation. If you don't take care of this land, it's not gonna take care of you. You've got a partnership with the land. It's not about being a cowboy, it's, it's about being a steward of the land. To be a steward of the land means that you're, you're in it day in and day out, through good times and bad times. I hope the Parks Ranch stays intact as an operating working ranch for generations to come. When we come back, we've got three more outstanding families to highlight as we introduce you to the 2022 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. That certain time in the day when you can take a deep breath knowing your work is done. That's the feeling Aspen products can create cost-effective alternatives to name brands that deliver the same results. Quillaxin is one of them. Use it to prevent and treat respiratory disease in your herd. Then breathe easy. Find them at Animal Health International. Welcome back. As we continue our look at the Environmental Stewardship Regional Award winners, for 2022. Cattle producers face all kinds of challenges when it comes to protecting the environment, but they all have a common goal, leaving the land better than they found it. Let's head to Region 5 and the winning operation in Montana. Stewardship to me is plugging into the environment in a seamless way, working with Mother Nature to leave the land better than we started. I'm David Mannix with Mannix Brothers Ranch in Helmville, Montana. Well, we've been here a long time, right? Our family's been ranching on this landscape for over 140 years. My brothers and I are fourth generation, and then we have the fifth generation working on the ranch now, and some grandkids coming up will be six when they get active. We've been fortunate with a number of the next generation wanting to come back. I think that's probably tied to the fact that they get some say in, in what goes on on a not only a daily basis, but an annual and a far-reaching basis. Every Tuesday morning, we get together for the weekly meeting, and we talk about bigger pictures type stuff, or how can we make things better, because every day we are working to leave the land better than we found it. We started a direct-to-consumer beef program in 2008, and we feel that selling direct gives us a chance to connect with customers a little bit. We've always tried to be very open with what we do and why we do it. I think it's to our advantage, but also to the ranching industry's advantage to tell our story and promote what we're doing and share it. It kind of stretches our comfort zone at times, but it's also valuable, necessary step that we should take. If there's one word that defines our sustainability goals, it would be to coexist. One way we coexist with nature is by improving our soil health. And we have found that rotational grazing has had a positive impact on the health of our land. We're, like everybody else, trying to do a better and better job of taking care of soil health, forage health, and a big part of that is allowing enough rest. We want to bring in the cows for a short time and then get off that grass and let it recover to allow root development, a healthier, more resilient forage, and hopefully more production. To make this intensive grazing work, it does take a lot of infrastructure. We probably have 
close to 100 different water tanks on pipelines, and those are sources of water where the cattle can concentrate that are away from the creeks to not impact the water and keep water quality high. We're not just passionate about what's best for us, but what's best for the whole system. It's trying to do right by the land. I think that grandpa and great grandpa both strongly felt that the goal was always to leave it better than you found it. That was passed on to my dad, my uncles, and to us. Of that heritage and that, that commitment and that blood and sweat that went into managing and caring for the land, we don't take it lightly. It is very ingrained in us to do the responsible thing and care for the land. It's really cool to see my nephews and my children engage and get it and actually fairly quickly surpass my own level of knowledge. So that's rewarding knowing that, you know, as we pass it on, that it will be taken care of and I suspect it will be better than it is today. That would be pretty cool. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the Environmental Stewardship Award winners, see photos and videos, or even learn how to nominate someone for the award next year, just visit the website environmentalstewardship.org. We're not done talking about the 2022 ESAP Regional Winner. When we come back, we'll show you the great work being done at two more award-winning operations. Stay with us. There's never a dull moment for the Nelsons. Fifth generation Montana ranchers. Since 1868, they've been herding cattle, reeling in trout, and exploring Paradise Valley from their backyard. Here's to another 150 years of adventure. There's a story in every piece of land. Run with us on a John Deere Gator XUV and start telling yours. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization, working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. Every day, cattlemen and women do all they can to provide the best possible care for their land. They do so because they're committed to protecting and improving their natural resources and leaving a strong legacy for the next generation. Today, we're highlighting the 2022 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. Let's take you to Nevada to meet this year's Region 6 Award winner. Cattle managed well can be a very, very useful tool. I go out and I look in the Bodie Hills where I'm running these cattle and the air is clean, the water is clean, the land is healthy, and it's being utilized in a very functional way. I'm Stephen Fullstone from Smith Valley, Nevada. I'm a sixth generation Nevadan. My family's been here since the 1850s. We raise cattle, we raise a lot of alfalfa, grass hay. I love being out on a horse moving cattle. Being out in the ecosystem in the middle of nowhere with cows is one of the best feelings. Being able to do it with my family, with my dad, is just amazing. I'm Annette Fullstone, and Stephen and I are sister and brother. We're siblings, and Emily's my niece. She's the young generation that can bring new innovative things to my brothers and my generation. So we run a cow-calf operation, Angus Hereford Cross cattle. We are right on the border of California and Nevada on the eastern slope of the Sierras, and our cattle go up into the Sierra 
mountains on permits and private land for the summer months. When you're out there and you watch the cattle, there's actually a tremendous amount of feed out there. They eat a lot of the brush that is out there. We pay very close attention to our utilization on our ranges. We really work on moving our cattle and you can see responses in the grass as long as you don't overgraze them. We want to live on this land for generations. We have to take care of it. In the last 15 years, there's been a lot of work done where we have removed pinyon and juniper trees. What you do is if you eliminate that plant, um, you're gonna basically raise the water table so that more grasses and more shrubs are available. The removal of the juniper in the Bodie Hills has only improved the environment for both our cattle and for the sage grouse. Improving the grass that's growing up, improving the ecosystem that works for both. So some of the projects that we really worked on were mostly habitat restoration, creating better environments for meadow, riparian uh, meadows. It was that massive head cut that we were looking to repair. It had really washed out. There was little to no grass growing. We used a backhoe. We, we cut a head cut barrier. Uh, we put this felt liner to allow water to flow through, but the sediment is collected, and then we lined it with rock. It's a, tremendous to see how quickly that healed itself. That landscape really came back from being just this washed out, eroded, dry creek bed to now this lush meadow that constantly runs water. My dream for the future of this ranch is to continue to work on our regenerative practices to be more sustainable in every aspect. We want better food, better environment, better waterways, better air, a better future. Our cattle are very beneficial to the land. We are probably raising the best source of protein you can on the environment that we're on. Private land, uh, public land, I think it's a renewable resource that we have and it's probably the highest and best use of the land. Now clearly, the Environmental Stewardship Award Program would not be possible without the sponsors who have joined with NCBA and the National Cattlemen's Foundation to keep it going strong. We asked some of the sponsors why they think it's important to support this program. This USD NRCS is so excited about this opportunity, this award, because this particular award recognizes and highlights farmers and ranchers who go the extra mile, not just for their farm, but for their community. And NRCS is excited about having the opportunity to work with farmers and ranchers, beef cattle producers, that not only protect the natural resources, but help new farmers, beginning farmers, be a part of that process. So our purpose, Russell, at Forteva is to enrich the lives of those who produce and consume uh, and uh, really champion success uh, for generations to come. And when you think about what we're doing in the beef industry, all of these cattle ranchers are providing good, nutritious, tasty, high quality protein to the consumer. But what they're doing behind the scenes oftentimes is managing their herd in a healthy manner and really advancing the environment through all their sustainability of efforts. No award better aligns with our company purpose and what we do every day than what ESAP does. McDonald's takes caring for the environment within the communities where our supply chain touches and in the communities where our restaurants serve, we, we take that seriously. It's of high value to McDonald's and it's something that we view as our responsibility. We know that taking care of the land is something that creates more resiliency within the beef industry. There's more resiliency for the producer. They take care of the land, the land takes care of them, which creates more resiliency for the beef supply chain, the beef industry as a whole which we're a part of and which we rely on. We're a huge supporter of producers throughout the U.S. We are, we serve food to our customers. Food is reliant upon agriculture. So we want to support the producers that are adopting these amazing practices that are leaders within the community, that are bold enough to be different and to be an example. And we wanna be able to support their ability to share what they've learned, to share what they're experiencing and to let other producers see that as well and see if that's something that's of interest to them. I've been fortunate enough to work with landowners for 30 years in South Dakota doing private lands conservation practices. And then within that, 
I would say that the pinnacle of my career and my experience in the Fish and Wildlife Service is the last eight years that I've had the pleasure of working with the ESAP program. And the ESAP program to me just demonstrates how important it is to implement private lands conservation in a voluntary way. So it's a great case history of what's possible with these sort of partnerships. We've got one more ESAP Regional Award winner to show you. We'll introduce you to that operation when we return. Stay with us. This beef quality assurance tip is funded by the Beef Checkoff. Hi, I'm Steve Boyles from The Ohio State University, Beef Extension Specialist. And my beef quality assurance tip is about bunk management. One of the pillars of beef quality assurance is providing fresh quality feed. One of the ways to do that is through bunk management. Bunk management can improve feed efficiency because we're not gonna waste as much feed. There are two things that I normally look at when evaluating a set of cattle and where their intake is. I look at the bunk and I also look at the cattle. Well, let's look at the bunk first. You can use a bunk scoring system. An example would be a zero, one, two, three, four. Now a zero is a slick bunk. There's not any feed in there essentially. A one, there may be sprinkles of feed in that bunk. Twos, threes, fours, you can use your own judgment, but there's extra feed in there at the time you are ready to bring more feed to those animals. If you've got twos, threes, and fours, that could be feed that is going to be reduced in quality, especially if it has moisture in it, say some sort of silage in there, and that's going to reduce overall feed efficiency of the pen. So we're going to come back and evaluate if we need to reduce the feed or increase the feed. Normally, if you're going to increase the feed, increase it about 10%. If you're going to decrease the feed, use your own judgment, probably about 10% the opposite way. Admittedly, weather can alter how cattle eat. Uh, if a storm comes through, that's going to affect how much they eat. And you may have to make some judgments momentarily for that. But overall, a feed efficiency can be improved through a bunk score system. But there's that other factor. We've looked at the bunk. Let's look at the cattle. My general rule is 25, 50, 25. So when that truck comes through, I want to see about 25% of the cattle coming up there. They are ready to eat. 50%, they could be in the middle of the pen, even back of the pen, but they're going to get up and they saw the truck come through. They're going to start to make their way to come up there and eat some feed. Finally, that 25% that is maybe standing at the back of pen or laying down. They may not come up to the bunk at all. They've just eaten. So you have a good estimate on how much those cattle are eating. So once again, when you're evaluating how much feed to provide in a pen, look at the bunk, but also look at the cattle. The Beef Quality Assurance Program is funded by the Beef Checkoff. Welcome back. We're bringing you some great stories about those who make their living on the land and their outstanding conservation efforts as we honor the 2022 Environmental Stewardship Award winners. Now, let's introduce you to the Region 7 winner from South Dakota. We can't have a good, clean environment without cattle. They are not polluters. They are the ones that actually let that system grow and flourish. Hi, I'm Brian Jorgensen. I'm the Chief Agronomy Operations Officer here at Jorgensen Land and Cattle and we're from Ideal, South Dakota. We have four partners, myself, my brother Greg, my nephew Cody, and my son Nicholas. My great-grandfather um, homesteaded here in 1909. They've been here ever since. And myself and my cousin Nicholas will be fourth generation. I have two boys and a daughter, which would be the fifth generation, and Nicholas has four boys that could someday be part of the operation as well. Jorgen Salani Cattle has been in the Black Angus cattle business for 
it'll be close to 70 years. Most of what we do is we, we merchandise bulls. We'll probably lease or sell somewhere around 5,250 bulls, uh, which makes us the largest seed stock producer in the United States. It was not our goal to be the number one bull producer in the United States, but it happened, and I think it happened because we just put out a really good product. Soil health is a principal part of everything that we do in our operation every day. And so we have to do everything that we know and have power to do to sustain that and build the health of that soil. The only way to do that is to have a hoof running on, on farmland, have a cow or, or a bull, some sort of a ruminant running on that farm ground. And one of the major ways we found to improve soil health is rotational grazing. We've been supplementing that uh, with a GPS grazing collar. I can get on my computer in my office and I can draw a fence and then, you know, instruct the caller to tell them to stay there. So in a rotational grazing scenario, where we would have to go to a pasture and string up poly wire, right, if we wanted to subdivide it in some way, we don't have to do that now. We can graze cattle, you know, where you can't put a fence in effectively. So we can actually graze some spots of, of land on our property that we may have never used before. Sustainability has been an important part of our operation for decades. And I, I think it's a great thing for us because I think it's going to be what powers us into the future. It's a passion of our families to leave the land better than what you had found it when you first started operating it. And if everybody thinks that way, then I think this whole, this whole world will be a better place. We never feel like we've reached the end of the road. Our family has always believed that we can do better. So we're always going to try and look for things that will improve whatever resource we have available to us. We're always looking for new innovative ways to make our place better. And if we can do that, uh, I think we can continue on uh, for a long, long time. When we come back, we'll wrap up this special edition of Cattleman to Cattleman and tell you how you can be nominated for the Environmental Stewardship Award. Stay with us. This Beef Quality Assurance Tip is funded by the Beef Checkoff. I'm Dan Buskirk, Beef Extension Specialist with Michigan State University with a Beef Quality Assurance Tip. Radio Frequency Identification, or RFID, is an increasingly popular method of individual animal identification. You should always apply tags according to the manufacturer's instructions to increase readability and retention. First, make sure you have the correct applicator for the tags you are using. Next, make sure that the animal is secured so that the tag can be applied properly on the left ear. Make sure that the female part of the tag is on the inside of the ear and the male stud is on the back of the ear. We want to place the tag a quarter to a third of the distance from the head to make sure that we have good retention. If we put the tag too close to the head, we may have the tag discs too tight to one another so that the animal's ear does not heal properly. And if it's too far from the head, it may increase the chance for that tag to tear the ear and reduce retention. For more information on animal identification and record keeping, check with your state extension beef cattle team or visit bqa.org. The Beef Quality Assurance Program is funded by the Beef Checkoff. have an upcoming production sale to advertise? Then contact the Cattleman to Cattleman marketing team or your breed association to learn more. Now it's not too early to start thinking about nominations for the next group of Environmental Stewardship Award winners. Any organization or individual can nominate a beef producer for this award. As we told you earlier, a committee of experts from inside and outside the cattle industry evaluates each nominee 
and picks a winner from each of NCBA's seven regions. The selection committee looks for both sound conservation practices and the ability to serve as a spokesperson for the industry. You can download a copy of the nomination packet at environmentalstewardship.org. For this week's legacy photos, we've got some beautiful images from all of these award-winning operations. Let's take a look. Now, one of these regional stewardship award winners will be named the national winner at April's legislative conference in Washington, D.C. It's an important event where members of the cattle industry join NCBA's Washington-based policy team for three days of advocacy on Capitol Hill. You can get all the details on how to attend at the website ncba.org. So there you have it the seven regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award for 2022. We salute and thank all the winners, the sponsors, and everyone else involved who has helped make the Environmental Stewardship Award program such a huge success for the last three decades. That's our time for this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.